Hello, everybody. My name is Osvaldo Almora, and on behalf of my colleagues, and you can see that I have several colleagues, I want to talk about the Emerging PV Reports Initiative, which is basically a project for presenting and illustrating, summarizing, surveying on the best achievements in photovoltaics, uh, showing them as a function of the band gap of the photovoltaic materials and uh, so, uh, uh, with respect to the shock visit limit. For those who doesn't know about us yet, we are basically trying to complement the words that we, we most of us know that uh, nicely is nicely done by NREL's the chart and solar cells efficiency tables from Martin Green, which basically represent the best certified efficiencies for each technology. However, if you are focused in, in emerging photovoltaics, for instance, you find that there are a lot of non-certified published pair review articles, which are really uh, cutting edge results. And in particularly in the cases of, of transparent and semi-transparent photovoltaics, flexible photovoltaics and high band gap photovoltaics, we don't have like a systematic reference for where the or where is going the best uh, results in, in research in photovoltaics. The same uh, finding a, a systematic reference for the theoretical for how the, the cells behave with respect to the theoretical limit, the shock visit limit. That is something that is, is, is really hard and be really hard to, to find. And also the stability of the emerging photovoltaic techniques, uh, technologies like organic photovoltaics, perovskites, and dyes is one of the most important subjects uh, nowadays. And we would like, I hope that you agree with us, that we would always like to have a systematic survey, which is summarizing uh, all the trends and, and the latest achievement in this regard. So the, in order to uh, approach um, these issues, we basically, group of researchers, we, we agreed to create a database, which you can find in emergingphotovoltaic.org, where you can uh, look for a series of achievements, best reported uh, performance, let's say not only uh, power conversion efficiency, but power conversion efficiency or transparent or flexible, for each photovoltaic technology and for several applications. We hope that this is going to uh, be developing and we hope that the people really um, give us some feedback and, and, and get involved in this project. At the same time, so you can access to this website, you can provide, you can submit your data, you can look at data which is already there. And with, in collaboration with advanced learning materials, we, we already launched the first version of what is supposed to be a series of surveys of um, review articles uh, called basically the emerging PV reports, where um, we, we hope that every six months or every year, we kind of summarize and provide some kind of general overview on where the, the research in emerging prototypes is going on. In order to do this, of course, we are summarizing, we are collecting the best. In order to do that, of course, since we are not taking only the certified um, results, we, we need some, some kind of quality control or inclusion criteria. In order to do that, basically what we ask is that the best, these best reports um, in the field of photovoltaics uh, are, are made through uh, published peer-reviewed articles. So you can, uh, once you have already your results published, you only need to present the JP curve, measure it under standard uh, thing, um, conditions. You, you should present the standard quantum efficiency spectrum that we can use for integrating the charge circuit current under standard uh, illumination spectrum. And also we can extract the band gap, the photovoltaic band gap, which we take uh, with the definition of the 
uh, inflection point in the absorption threshold of the EQE. And the third main requirement for being included in, in this survey is basically that you provide a description of your results, which can be used for reproducing uh, the same results. In the case of if you are focused on flexible voltage, you should provide some evidence on minimum binding radius, of course. If you are talking about transfotting or semi transfotting photovoltaics, we expect that the transmitter spectrum and the average species of transmitter, transmitter, transmitter should be explicit, explicitly uh, presented in the, in the paper, in the article. And for the stability test, we know that this is a, a, there is a lot of discussion about what is the actual the best way or uh, how can we test the stability of emerging photovoltaics. And in order to do that, I, we ask that at least uh, you provide the power conversion of which is a function of time or before and after 200 hours or 1,000 hours under uh, one some illum illumination standard or an, equ an equivalent uh, illumination. So once, it, let's say that you, you have published uh, research, let's say that um, you fulfill all of these criteria and, and, and you get to the to the list and to the survey and this is basically what we present as you can see here we present the dots the lighter dots are those already included in the first version of the merging pv reports and the more opaque are the, the latest results which are going to be um, included in the in the next version version two here we find uh, we can find the solid line is the chocolate whistle uh, the typical chocolate whistle limit for the efficiency, the VOC, open circuit voltage, threshold current. Um, at this point, we use um, the typical chocolate whistle limit, which only depends on the band gap and the temperature. We take 300 kelvins as preference. And here you can see that in general, the emerging uh, PV have a very broad distribution of band gaps for each technology and uh, we also present some uh, as a reference some more established technologies like silicon or thin field photovoltaics we present also uh, the logarithmic radius uh, for each parameter with respect to, to the chocolate whistle limit which are uh, contributing to the overall efficiency of the cell so you can see that, for instance, the gallium arsenide is closer to, to the choking whistle limit and silicon is the next and so on. It is very interesting that, for instance, in the case of um, if you compare perovskite, the top the record perovskite solar cell with the top silicon, you can see that, for instance, the VOC is, uh, is more a limiting factor here than there. And, and, and the other way around for, for the uh, photocurrent. Similarly, we present in the case of flexible voltaics, um, again, the, the performance parameters as a function of the band gap. We show the chocolate whistle limit. We can see here that, for instance, best performing cells are actually the, the first kind solar cells, which are around 65% of chocolate whistle limit. In the case of transparent and semi-transparent photovoltaics, we, in this case, the chocolate whistle limit, which we again show with solid lines, is not only a function of the band gap and pressure, uh, but also a function of the transmittance of the sample. And here we can use the, the liabilization efficiency, the product of the ABP times the PCE, in order to illustrate how much good is a, is a cell, or we can uh, represent the, the performance parameters as a function of the average visible transmitters. We can see that, for instance, most of the top transparent and transparent photovoltaics are around 55% of the chocolate visible limit. In the case of long term stability, we, we provide, for instance, the, the power conversion efficiency as a function of of the initial, the after 200 or 1,000 hours of degradation test. We also show the degradation rate 
uh, as a function of the initial power conversion efficiency. And uh, in order to illustrate the chocolate whistle limit for each case, we use the stability test and the yield, which is basically the integral of all the energy that we can extract. In the limit, we assume that no degradation occur at all. And we can see that, for instance, the best results that we can uh, we have found in the literature are around 70% of the trophy whistle limit. In the case of multi junctions this is something which was uh, which is suspected to be included in the next version. And we are still working in how to represent and to provide the best way um, to interpret this data. But basically, one, one of, of the uh, approach that you can find is basically the performance parameters as a function of the adding of the different uh, band gaps. We can also present um, the position, the relative position of one band gap as a function of the other. Um, here, let's say that the, the closer to yellow, the higher the efficiency is. But this is something that we are working on. And uh, well, with this, we basically ask the people to, to read the, the many PV reports articles, the reviews, to, to let us know if, if we are actually missing some data, and if you think that we can uh, improve somehow our project, please get involved with us, give us some feedback, visit emergingpv.org uh, and submit your articles and check the articles, the, the the points, the cells, the, re the reports that we already have there. And uh, thank you very much to everybody. And especially, I have to thank to the Emerging PB uh, Consortium, my colleagues. And um, particularly, uh, I thank the Tilbon Graven and Anna Froger editors from Advanced Cinematic. Thank you very much and have a nice day.